My tattoo machines are pulsating electric devices that work on the order of a sophisticated doorbell. First you add electricity. Then you add the pig. When you do get tattooed, you are altered the rest of your life. You know, you're making, you're, you're making a statement also for the rest of your life. Unless you want to go down and have it physically removed or altered. Uh, a tattoo can be totally covered uh, with another tattoo design. It has to be bigger and darker, but it can be covered. And that's really the best thing to do if you don't like a tattoo, is to go down and get a competent tattoo artist to, to cover it. And because, uh, you know, you might wind up with uh, being married to somebody else by a different name than you got on yourself. You know, so you can, you can change that. But back to the business of altering a person for the rest of their life. I use my tattoos as a, sort of a point of relative position. That's how I can tell who I am when I'm in doubt. I'm an artist, you know, and I enhance people's bodies, you know, and I don't, you know, do anything to disfigure somebody. And I think if you go through and put lightning bolts on some dummy's face or something, that, you know, that would be disfiguring him. And um, so I don't tattoo alone for money, you know, I'd like, I feel that, that a tattoo is more than a picture on the skin. Because that's sort of how I, I don't think of that what I do as tattoos, but they're tattoos. It's just, you know, T-U-T-T, double O. So when you do something to somebody that's going to alter them the rest of their life by the picture or the philosophy that you put on them, you've got to do that with a certain amount of conscience. You know, and if you're just in it, you're a fast buck artist and you just want to get in there and whip, bang, you know, and don't give a damn about nothing, you know. Um, that guy, uh, he'd wind up with a set of lightning bolts on his forehead, and I bet in a few years he'd be a sick son of a bitch. The reasons that people obtain tattoos, collect tattoos, um, I don't know, it might be a hobby or something. There's, there's cultural uh, reasons for it. There's the, today it's like, uh, why not, you know, why not put something pretty on your skin? Why not be a little bit different? If you get down into the, the worldwide today, you know, there's the, the oriental design, and I guess the American style tattoo design, which almost starts off with, uh, um, if he was going to get tattooed all over in American style, you'd get ankle bands, and wristbands, and a neck band and a cargo net on your balls, you know, and then just fill the rest of it in. You know, that would be an American style coverage, probably an eagle on your chest. I mean, that was like, but the, but the Orientals do it with, you know, like legends and things like that. It's, uh, it's a very popular style today, especially when somebody's gonna get heavily tattooed, because then that way they get into the legend. You know, it's uh, a legendary, the, the Oriental uh, mythology and everything. I don't understand it myself, but I, and I would like to have time someday to, you know, to study it because uh, um, all t I feel a kinship to all all styles and all cultures of tattooing because it's um, when I go to you know like to a primitive country like down into Samoa, um, it's then uh, they still tattoo there today. You know, all their chiefs are tattooed, uh, even though I couldn't speak to some of the people. I mean, we had a, a, a kinship. They made me a chief. Through the processes of my visit down there, they uh, all their chiefs are tattooed, and I had more than all of their chiefs, you know, because they wear like a, a pair of pants. They call it a paya, and um, I'm tattooed, uh, you know, from neck to ankles to wrist, and so zap. They called me Taula Imololo, so that's my Samoan name. And we are a traditional animal, you know. Like a woman came in one time and wrote an article about me a long, long time ago. So when I get the article, they start off saying that in her research, she'd found out that anybody that had the words death before dishonor tattooed on them was basically homosexual. So I thought, you know, I had thought back of the people I'd, you know, put death before dishonor on through the years. And so the next guy that came in and picked out a great big dagger with a, was a Marine. Great big son of a bitch. And I, you know, so I sort of like to start talking to him. You know, I, you know, so I finally asked him, you know, what are you having to put on for? I mean, what's, you know, the basic? And he says, because he believed it. You know, death before dishonor. So I guess it's it's also like put it, there's your philosophy again. 
there's a thousand different reasons that a person would get tattooed. Probably each person that comes in to get a tattoo would uh, it'd be different numbers and combinations like number 27, 34 or something. You know, like, um, it's just how you're, how it's um, introduced to a person. You know, you might have a friend to come home with a tattoo. Um, you might want to take and show your emulation and affection for um, a loved one, so you go down and get a tattoo to show them you love them. You know, you might uh, do it on a, in a memory thing. You might do it because it's, uh, it's, it's really basically an avant-garde no-no. Religious philosophy is one of the weirder things that people get into. I mean, they like their concept of, uh, of religion. And that's really a way to get into showing like your praise for the deities, putting it on your own body, you know, like your earth vehicle. So there was a fellow come in one time and he had plus Christ equals minus fear and minus Christ equals plus fear put on him. I mean, that was his credo, you know. And um, so I guess you could take and change the words around, but I mean, it's like a positive philosophy and a negative philosophy of looking at it. Uh, there was a guy come running in the tattoo shop one day and uh, wanted tattooed on his extra rib that uh, I don't have any sister. So I don't know what, uh, you know what had happened to him, but something in a nature had disturbed him and some direction that he wanted to really indelibly etch that on his body. I've got some of my philosophy tattooed on my body. I have, I tried to look up the, the, the Tuttle family crest and couldn't find one. Just a bunch of potato diggers from Ireland or Wales, you know? And um, so I designed my own, and I sort of like my basic philosophy has changed now since I've had this put on, but it's um, a cock, a rooster, and a feather, and some Latin writing, which is Galena hodie plume crass, which means chicken today, feathers tomorrow. I have modified this philosophy into the, that success is the trip, not the destination. But see, so people put their philosophy on themselves. You know, if a guy puts born to lose on his arms, he's either doing it for two reasons. It's that he's putting the mark of the enemy on there. He's putting a re reminder that he's had nothing but a bunch of trouble in his life. So he's born to lose. And so this is maybe something that he can bounce off of and elevate himself. Um, and then possibly he just, uh, he really believes that and just says, you know, screw it. I'm born to lose, and I'm just going to let everybody in the world know it. I think all parents, you know, tell their kids, don't get tattooed. I'm sure that the last words that a mother gives her son on a, getting on a Greyhound bus in Omaha, Nebraska to go to Navy boot camp is, as the door is closing, the last words is, don't get a tattoo, you know. But that's understandable, because a mother's uh, uh, child is, uh, you know, she's an artist, and that's her ultimate artwork, and no artist likes to have their artwork altered. And this is really a, an alteration when you, when you tattoo somebody. Somebody obtains a tattoo because that's something that's going to last you the rest of your life. Some of the old sailors used to put on, uh, like, hold tight, and when they was climbing a rigging in a, in, a, in a bleeding blizzard, you know, hurricane, they, you know, hold tight. I mean, it was like their philosophy. They'd get a pig and a chicken put on each of the top of their feet. and. Uh, which a pig never um, drowns because uh, this is a weird philosophy, this whole thing. But you know, it's also a rooster never drowns. They both cut their throat and bleed to death before they drown. That's uh, the punchline. But anyhow, it's, that's sort of like a... Um, but they, they never technically drowned. So the old sailors will put that on, uh, that on their feet. You see a lot of them. I mean, it was out of the... It was, I've seen a lot of them, and I think I've maybe put a couple sets on them. Somebody that's trying to emulate the, you know, the traditional things, which there are a few people that that get traditional tattoos that people have been getting for hundreds of years. The human races have lost their tribes. See, we were, you know, we were at one time a lower form of life. We was up in trees running around having a good time and we decided to get civilized and complicate our lives. And so we lived in little groups which were tribes and the tribe all got tattooed the same way. So people today so as we got more sophisticated and went into communities and towns and cities, we lost that. And people suffer from it. And uh, so they're always trying to get into tribes like motorcycle gangs, try to, you know, uh, 
the Navy doesn't like the Army. Same service, same war, but they have a friction going. So, so it's, it's a tribal thing. So people in the military, they get the um, USMC and the Navy, and you know, so, and, so it's a spree de corps. It's, uh, so people come in from communes and get tattooed. Lovers get tattooed. There's a lot of different types of tattooing. Each culture has its own tattooing. Each tattoo artist, the contemporary tattoo artist, has his own style and his own his studio and his projections, a world of its own. So there's many, many types and styles of tattooing. Well, when anybody asks me about tattoo removals, I always tell them that it's like a, asking a preacher about divorce. It's a long 15 seconds. Good? That's good. Adios.